This meeting is about sharing something quite radical. It's completely unexpected. It's unknowable. And it's ungraspable. What's being pointed to isn't the words that are being said. It isn't the concepts that are being expressed. What's being pointed to is something that's, as I said, unknowable and ungraspable. It's basically energetic. So the words have the energy, just as everything else is that energy. There's nothing that's not that energy, which is why seeking for fulfillment, seeking for wholeness, Seeking for the end of seeking is hopeless. <laughs> because there's nothing that's not already fulfilled. So this is fulfillment. This is unconditioned. This is what's looked for. There, there's an experience that arises in this. It considers or experiences itself as a center to what's happening. And as the center to what's happening, to what's happening, it experiences everything is happening to it or for it. It takes responsibility or ownership. So it takes ownership for the thoughts, for the feelings. It takes ownership in the hope of being able to pray hard enough, <laughs> surrender well enough, become good enough, that it will attract to it what it wants create the life that it thinks it should have, become a good person so that people will like it. That whole experience of ownership is a dream. A dream that creates seeking. Seeking is the experience that there's something else. There's somewhere else. There's something other than this. There isn't anything other than this. There isn't anywhere to go. So seeking is never satisfied. Seeking is never fulfilled. Seeking never leads to an answer. This message exposes that. That seeking will never lead to finding what seeking is looking for. It also uncovers or exposes the experience of that center as being completely illusory. This message is radical because there's no hope in it. It doesn't speak to that center. It has nothing for that center in it. It exposes the reality that that center is actually emptiness. The illusory, illusorily experiencing itself as something. It's not something. There's no real something. When the experience of something real stops happening, or dies, or falls away, what's left is what is already this. So there's no message. There's no authority. There's no one that has anything that can be given. There's nothing to find. There's nothing that needs to happen. Everything is already.
what's unbelievable about that is this is that. Whatever's happening is all there is. This is the wholeness that's longed for. This is already complete. Even the experience that it's not is completeness a being experienced as incomplete. It doesn't make it real or true. So there's nothing on offer here. <laughs> Some kind of addiction to longing. Absolutely. And then when I hear you, it's hope. Hope. Keep you alive. Hope, hope. And when I hear you, I feel sad. It's yeah. like, and then I have to loop back to longing. Yeah. It's like. Well, you don't do that. It's just what happens. Survival is the intention of the individual. It wants to survive. So it will misunderstand what's being said in all sorts of directions. It can't hear what's being said because hearing it is the individual. The individual isn't looking for absence, but that longing is for the absence that everything is already. So it will never hear it. So I'll never be able to look before my process of cognition. What would the point of that be? To 
to recognize isness. Like But there isn't there is only isness. Mm -hmm. Not recognizing cognition is isness, not recognizing cognition. The belief there's an I that could recognize cognition is cog is isness. Believing there's an I that can recognize. Isness isn't before thought or before the experience of being an individual. Yes, that's what gave rise. That's what gave rise to it. That Isness is the experience of being an individual. This is isness. It's actually isn't. So the, the concept of revelation, like the revealing, like the lightning bolt from Kabbalah, or the um, emanation from awareness into being, is a hypothesis for the mind, not in existence. In the way that you described it, yeah, but <clears throat> the reason some of this stuff can be talked about is because there's a falling away of something that seemed to be happening, and it's through that falling away that what is is recognized through the apparent movement there's a revelation an uncovered the experience of the individual the first cover covering of the individual is that this needs meaning and purpose so seeking is the seeking to fulfill that need that this has meaning or needs meaning and purpose when that stops happening it's uncovered and things are what they are. But that's a story. That's that's a the illusion. It's only the individual that wants to have something revealed. Because it's the only the individual that's on the search for something else. When there's no need for anything else, there's no need to know what this is. There's no need for it to be revealed as anything. The suggestion isn't here that there shouldn't be an individual, or that it's better not to be an individual, or that it's better to somehow recognize what this is. That's not at all the suggestion. The suggestion is nothing's better. There's no need for anything to happen or change. And beyond that, the suggestion is nothing ever really does happen. There's desire and action and happening. Anything you can name is going to be an appearance. If that appearance seems real, it's a story. When the individual falls away, it's just an appearance. The experience that it's real is also just an appearance, but not for the individual. There's nowhere to go.
isn't the answer so relief? There won't be, and there's no why. Sometimes the answers can be relief. Sometimes they can create contraction. Getting what I seek is not relief. Oh, it is for a little bit. So if you're hungry, get relief for a little bit. You can have spiritual experiences. That's relief for a little bit. What you want isn't what's being shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The individual wants something for itself. There's this is this is this what's being shared here has nothing for the individual. It's, it's recognized there isn't actually an individual. It's a dream. And when that dream stops happening, it never happens. Because all of the claims of the individual are false. I'm real. This is real. This matters. I have to behave a certain way. There's good and bad and right and wrong. I know what those are. It's all a dream. But it has no effect on what is. So when it stops happening, it never happens. There's no change. No real change. No real change. The dream stops. And you can talk about what happens when the dream stops for the individual. There's nothing really happening. To have something really happening, you have to have a center or a point or a position which can hold on to something. It's only when that center or position holds on to something that time starts to happen for a real. And then experiences and change happen for real. Because there's the experience of someone being able to hold on to. That's a dream. Nothing happens for real. There is no real center. Nothing can be held on to.
this is not what it is, why does it seem that it is? What, if it's not what it is? Yeah. It is what it is. It's only what it is. The experience of the individual, though, is that there's something else or that it's real. But it is what it is. It's only what it is. We're, we're, the individual's looking for something else. For the individual, what's happening is real. When there's no individual, it's not real, and it's not unreal. But when is there ever not an individual? Now. There is never an individual. <laughs> it's a dream. It's a dream of experience and false claims. The experience of the individual is that I am in the body, like the ghost in the machine with all these levers and buttons. I have free will and choice. I am in control. I make decisions. I own what's happening. I am responsible. That's the dream of the individual. So that makes this appear as a point in a journey that has to be navigated that has to be dealt with. That's a dream. This is not a point in a journey. This isn't actually moving. Why does it seem that way? Because there's a center, an apparent experienced center, which says, I'm real. Why? Why? There's no reason. Because there's no point to it. There's no purpose to it. It has no effect just in the experience of the individual. And that experience is seeking. It's like the ocean, you get the whole ocean, and in the absolute center of the whole ocean, a bit of the ocean separates itself and experiences itself as though it's separate from the whole ocean. So like a drop apparently forms in the center of the ocean. What difference does it make? What change? Just look well, there's its dream. There's no drop in the center of the ocean. There is. No, well, there's an imaginary drop. If you imagine some separation in the ocean that it happens, yeah, then there's a drop. And what happens when that imagination of that separation ends? Nothing. Does the ocean change? Does anything change? There's an apparent experience that stops happening. It changes for the individual. No, it doesn't. The individual stops happening. Nothing changes. The individual is the experience that change is happening. Change is real. Because for the individual, it matters because it's going somewhere, because this isn't it. This isn't satisfying, this is unfulfilling. So it's looking for something else. And that covers over that this already is what it's looking for. And it will never ever find it. Experience. There is no experience. See, what you're going to do, what you're going to have to do, is you're going to have to put this in a story that goes somewhere. It's all right. I mean, that's what a question is, a part of a story that said this is a part of a continuum. It isn't. It appears to be, but that doesn't matter.
Oh, the concepts are very simple. They are. This is everything. There's an experience that arises in everything, calls itself me, has the experience of being here, goes on a search. That search hides that everything is already fulfilled through the experience of it being not fulfilling, through the experience of separation. That's it. Those are all the concepts. But is this, this feeling of separation and seeking, um, the way it sounds is that there is, but there is also unfulfillment? As if this unfulfillment is what drives, seems to drive everything that seems. Absolutely. It drives the seeking. So is it, the only real thing unfulfilling? No, no, that nothing's real. Nothing's unreal. Unfulfillment is a part of the dream of the individual. There is no individual. The individual's claim is that there's a center to happening, there isn't one. That that center is separate from everything else that seems to be happening, it isn't. That that separation requires effort and seeking to overcome it, it doesn't. It's a dream. That seeking covers over the fact that this is fulfillment. There is only unconditional love. Everything that seems to happen is unconditional love happening. It is more perfectly what's looked for than can be imagined. It's already that. And that will never be found. Seeking will never find fulfillment. Because the claims of seeking that it needs to be brought about, that it can be or needs to be known, are false. This can't be known. Fulfillment can't be known. It doesn't need to be known. It can't be had, grasped. This doesn't need meaning and purpose. This doesn't need to go anywhere. Nobody does. We have a concept. Yeah, that's a concept. And that's not the reality of it. Just like all the concepts, what I described before, aren't what's being pointed to. This is very simple to understand what's being shared here as far as concepts go. Understanding is not the reality. The reality is everything, so there's no position to know it from. Separation's an appearance. It doesn't have the solidity to hold knowing. Nothing is solid. So knowing, knowing in that sense is always separate because it's to have an object. It's like step the individual lives in a world of knowing. That's how it experiences moving, knowing. It knows it is, it knows something's happening, it knows it's real, and so it knows that it's moving through this apparent existence in a progression of things getting steadily better or worse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the basis for the experience of knowing is the experience that subjective awareness is a solid point. That subjective awareness can be known. Experience, to have an experience or a knowing, you need a subject and an object. The subject says, the subject I says, I know I am as a subject. Where's the subject that knows that? It 
It's a dream. So All that, knowing on that level is a dream. So that's different from, say, information. Right. Yeah. Which doesn't have a function. Yeah. Function. Yeah. When there's no subject to position, there's only what seems to be happening. So information is something that seems to be happening. Planning seems to be happening. Mm -hmm. Conversation seems to be happening. Mm -hmm. It's the solidity that Nobody drops away. That. Exactly. It's the solidity that the experience of the individual creates. Or that means something. Exactly. Exactly. The same For me, that's the same solidity. Meaning mm -hmm. something is the same as it being solid or being real. complex because I'm so fascinated with myself, I'm completely fascinated, like everything that arising is <clears throat> regenerating this. It's not really like that. It's, it's everything that arises is then owned by the experience of being an individual because it's seeking. So it takes everything that arises and it has a whole cabinet of, of file cabinet where it has to put everything in. Everything arises naturally as it is. It doesn't actually make sense. But the individual needs it to fit into the belief system that surrounds this experience, the real experience of being an individual. And so it has a toolkit that comes in and it, and it manipulates everything so that it fits into the file cabinet. So that everything has an order in its story of what its life is about. No, that need doesn't arise anymore. There's no need for a thought to have a context anymore. A thought is just simply a thought. So this, for the individual, is experienced through a veil. A veil of need for this to fit into its story. So this isn't actually seen for what it is. It's seen in the context of what the individual needs it to be. There's no need for this to make sense. There's no need for a file cabinet. There's no need for a story. So <clears throat> the individual will take ownership for what's happening. It'll say, I hear those words. I understand those words. I don't understand those words. Those words make sense. Those words are bullshit. I'm hearing. When there's no one there, there's just hearing. And that can't be described. So no one is hearing, and no one is responding. Absolutely, but that's already the case. Right. Even the experience of the individual who says, I'm doing it, is no one yeah. experiencing at being an individual. Yes. say there is no evolution. Well, there is until there isn't. And when there isn't, there never was. Somehow it's already done. It never happened. It never, it never ends because the ending of it is that it never happened. This didn't actually come from anywhere, and it's not going anywhere. It's singular appearance that has no connection to anything. 
There's no relationship. I said this was a singular appearance and there's no actual relationship. the resource for this eye? Is it like societal conditioning? Is it what's, what's continuing the propagation? <clears throat> well, I mean, any answer is just going to be a story. I don't mind. There are answers. Yeah. So scientists will tell you that it's nine different nodes in the brain that assimilate an eye in the middle of it because the brain is complex enough to do that. It's one answer. Could you repeat that? Do you want another one? Give me another one. <laughs> There's a tension in the body which arises out of which arises an experience of here, which is the first thing that's known, that immediately it turns into a personal experience of I am here, around which a conglomerate of beliefs which make everything make sense to that I. It's another story. They're just stories. They don't help. And there's no reason for it. There's no reason for any. It's already free. Could you repeat that? Uh, there's first nine time. nodes. It might be six nodes. I'm not sure. But there's nodes. obviously nodes. Well, central conglomerate points in the brain. Which assume a personal experience. Never heard of.
is the is the longing totally useless if I have a longing for a whole yeah. longing for the whole yeah. wholeness. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. It, that's why I'm here today. Yeah. The longing. Yeah. It's useless. It's useless. But everything <laughs> everything is already saying what's being said again. There's no need to go anywhere. Nothing needs to happen. The longing says something needs to happen. That's the dream. The rocks are saying it. The sun is saying it. The wind is saying it. The people on the street are saying it. Everything is saying, this is all there is. This is wholeness. This is fulfillment. Everything. Always. Screaming it. Even the experience of longing. Absolutely. Is saying, this is it. Doesn't feel like it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> when it does, it does. We're not actually talking about a particular feeling. This isn't about being happy or having good feelings. Stubborn because, but if I want to wake up, is there a you don't? Yeah, okay, <laughs> the eye doesn't want to wake up, but the eye wants personal enlightenment. Okay, it wants to know, it wants to know what it in the end, it wants to know that it's not going to die, it wants to know that it has control, that it's secure, and that it's not going to die. That's what it wants. None of those things exist, it can't not die because it was never born. And it can't have control because nothing's happened. There's nothing to control. This is chaos. Nobody knows what's happening. That's why the experience of the individual is so dissatisfying. Because it can't make it the way it thinks it should be. And if it succeeds, it only succeeds for a very short time. Nothing fills the hole. can't want this. Wanting has to have some sort of separation to it. This is already whole. It's completely unwanted. This is what's longed for. It has no prerequisite, no requirements. Nothing's going to happen that's going to bring what is about. It is already
would you say that is this consistent? No, because consistent implies real time. This didn't actually, this isn't a result of the last moment. It's like um, you scared, here that you can't like escape like, the laws of physics or anything. The laws of physics is a story. I mean, like in this dream state. Which dream state? I don't know. What's that one? <clears throat> I don't know. I just try to... Are we talking about the dream state of the individual? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Like, okay. Like Not like at night when you're having a dream, no, no, no. but like this being real. Like when you say this. <clears throat> yeah. This, this is this. So then, uh, no, there's no but, but it's like um, you can't escape it. But yeah. The individual can't yeah. escape it? The dream. No, but well, the individual the and the dream are the same yeah, thing. Exactly. <laughs> it's actually good news, yeah. <laughs> but just not for anyone. <clears throat> I'm never going to get this. Nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. I'm not going to wake up. I no, I don't wake up. I die. Yeah, it's terrifying. The individual is terrified of this. Yeah. Mm. Oh, completely. <coughs> but somehow I know. Yeah. Yeah. Everything I said was a story? Yeah, you can say that. It's all bullshit. It has no value whatsoever. Bummer. Oh. I pay for two days. <laughs> <laughs> No refund. No, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel stressed.
really is no point to be here because the individual cannot escape awakening its own death. Everything it thinks it does is just a confirmation of the false experiences that it has, the false claim that it is. Yeah. It's well and truly fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Even the experiencing or the language is difficult, but even the bracket somehow some thing of being that happens just am and then everything is lover and then there's like contraction and then I have to own that and then talk about it and have story and it's like did I make any sense but nobody does that Just what seems to happen. Yeah, it's just like seeming to happen. So nobody's guilty for doing that. There's no responsibility on any level. Even jail may appear sometimes. What? What? You said that there is no responsibility, but the, you, but still, the jail, the jail may appear sometimes for someone. Oh. For me, this talking about this, it's pointing out something so stunningly obvious that something hears it, something recognizes it, and resonates with it. In some way, it's like permission. It's like this is saying, "Yeah, this is it," and something there may go, "Yeah, I know that." Where is that? And that and that can relax that tension of the individual trying to make this into something else. Because you can't know it. That's why it's only kind of. Because that's where it hides. It hides. The individual wants to know that it's not. It wants to know that it's not going to die. It wants to know that this is wholeness. And it never gets that. That's how what is hides. That's how the wholeness of this is hides. Because the individual was looking for it. Wants to grasp it. Can't be grasped. What we're talking about here is absolute let go. Absolute surrender, a surrender that an individual could never do. There are these experiences of absolute surrender. But those aren't experiences. 
their experiences when the individual comes back and imagines or thinks it knows what happened. It didn't. Because it'll say that it happened in the past. It'll say that it knows what it is. This is absolute surrender. It didn't ever happen. It's not an experience. This is that. It doesn't go anywhere. There's an experience of knowing or being real that comes back and seems to put it somewhere else other than this. That's the dream. The, the experience is an experience that it's real. There's no, I guess there's no answer to why. There never seems to be an answer to why. For me, the question of why seems to be the me asking so that it can find a way out. Because if there were a reason to why, there could be an unreason. There's no way out. It's not really happened. It's just an experience. The experience of duality does not make duality real. But when you say uh, there is no way out, it doesn't mean that you're stuck in some I, little place, but it means that there is no movement anywhere, right? No, 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 the eye is completely stuck. Oh, the eye? Yeah, absolutely. That's the yeah. only you or center there is. The eye is trying to overcome the experience of separation through experience. It's trying to find the right experience that's going to solve the problem of experience.
No. I mean, if, if I understand what you mean by that. <clears throat> that this being unknowing is not an experience. There is a realization that I call the end of experience. That that doesn't hold, that doesn't stay. What it reveals, though, is that experience is simply an appearance. It's not real. What is the difference between the realization? Realizations are something that seem to really happen. They happen to somebody. Somebody's still there that cares. In the end, what we're talking about is the end of this matter. Is, is, is this happening? That's just all that's left. Happening. It has no content, it has no context, it has no need. It's not moving, it's just simply an appearance. Uh, it's simply happening. That's all it is. The realizations are just seem to be things that come up when the individual starts to fall apart. But they, they have no value. Realizations have no value. Of course, because to who? To who? Well, nothing has any value. Yeah. Psychic pyrotechnics. But then life comes in, you know? Like, Going to the toilet? Yeah, kind of the toilet, keep me job, I don't know, being a mother or a... Well, there isn't really a mother. And there's nobody keeping their job. Yeah. Yeah. It just arose that you had the alarm went off at night. All this, the, you know. Because it's then irrelevant. All of it's irrelevant. Well, irrelevant. It's all just what it is. It's empty. Empty meaningless. And the, the alarm went off at nine. Didn't happen in the past. Uh -huh. okay. That's this appearing as the alarm going off at nine. Thank you. Okay. This doesn't move. It appears to move. So experience is only, only arises when uh, there is subject, subject and object. It's an appearance. It cannot just arise without me, right? Well, no it, real experience would arise without me. No real experience that has consequence or is the result of something else. <clears throat> yeah, in that respect. But yeah. All that's being pointed to is that the individual has the experience that this is real, <coughs> but it knows what this is. Yeah. And it doesn't. With all this being said, and that, there's, a, there's apparent consequences to the experience of knowing I am and knowing what this is about. And those consequences seem really important and really complicated and really complex. There's a whole world out there of good and bad and right and wrong, you know. Trump shouldn't be doing that or should be or whatever, you know, and the, the president of, of Finland is obviously not very directive. He doesn't say that they should be a part of NATO or not. Those are just, those are all complex things that seem to matter to the individual because the individual is dependent upon the survival of what's going on. So it all seems real. When the individual is no longer there, obviously, this is it. Can't be known. It's unknowable. And it's not complex, and it's not complicated, and it's not special. It's, it's unconceivably simple. You mean it can be known because there is no separation? Because there's no separation. You can't know yourself. No, 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 there's really no self. There really is not the self yeah. develops into something else. <coughs> there's no center to the happening. There's no here. There's literally no here. There's no here. No point. 
Right. There's no point of reference. They're simply happening. The parallel. Every every point of reference is a dream. Does something happening? Sense. They're appearing and experiencing. How why experiencing? <laughs> <laughs> How why experiencing? Yeah. But there appears to be an experience. Hmm? Well, are we talking about with the individual? Yeah. The individual experiences, yeah? There's no how or why. Okay. <laughs> it's not really happening. It's a dream. So if there's an experience there of a sense of hearing these words, that is a dream. In reality, it can't be said where the words are coming from. It can't be said where they're being heard. It can't be heard. It can't be said how they're being understood. None of that is, can be known. It can't be known. The dream is that there's a center that's in control or has some effect on those things that seem to be happening. That's the dream. It's actually just chaos. It's actually just an explosion. There's simply sound, form, movement. That's all there is. It has no center. It doesn't come from anywhere. It doesn't mean anything. It's just chaotic freedom, absolute aliveness, with no, no point, no purpose. freedom and uh, it's kind of awesome but it doesn't call for celebrations mm. so it's great but it's ordinary mm. story about something that happened in my life when you were speaking just before it just like them there is there is this just collapsing like that story is no longer present and somehow I'm looking or something is looking and there's an absence that was an important story like a big this happened it didn't happen nothing happened nothing happened to nobody there wasn't somebody there was a still point for that to happen too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the dream. That doesn't feel like a relief. It feels like space. Mm. I feel relaxed. I feel relaxed. Oh, that sounds like a relief. No, like... Relaxed. But then I would have to reference non-relaxation. Now your mind's fucking. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This can't, you can't get this. And the relaxation or the release or the unraveling that can apparently happen doesn't matter. There's nothing to hold on to about it. There's no value in it. There's no way to put that in your pocket and take it with you. As soon as I start speaking, there's like owning an eyeness. Well, you never start speaking. Speaking happens. But you're not owning what you're speaking. You have no idea what's going on here, but there's no one here. There's no one there either. There's just what's happening.
I can almost feel my brain boiling now. I'm oh, trying, right. trying. No, it's not, not the problem. But I'm trying to, trying to so so hard to understand, and I can't. No. But should I just? No, no. Not think. No, 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 no. There's no suggestion. You're not doing it. Okay. There's no you. Well, it depends. <clears throat> if there's... What's that? If they use this information. Well, nobody can use this. If, if, it, if there's an experience of using it, that's a misunderstanding. This is completely useless. It can't be put into practice. What would you put into practice? There's nothing to practice. There's no one to practice. The experience that there needs to be something happening is the dream of the individual that this is new. This isn't about making things better. What's being shared is that this is already whole, even the experience that it's not. So seeking for wholeness 
only has the effect of covering over the reality that it's already whole. There's nothing to find, there's nothing lost. There is only this happening. And there's no need in it, there's no lack. Does that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> well, at least for now, it answers your something else that came up when you asked, the reason I asked is, this can have an effect if there's an openness to what's being shared here, that there's a resonance or an unraveling of that experience, the tightness of the experience of being an individual. But that's not a practice. That's not anything that any individual has any control over. Why did you come here to share these things? I can only say no one came here. Was there a reason? No. Well, no. That's because the whole the whole message is actually saying this appearance has no intention. Intention is a dream. What did you say? This, this appearance has no intention. <clears throat> this doesn't want to move anywhere. It doesn't want to be anything. <laughs> but I have also choice. There is no choice. There's no choice. There just isn't. The individual experiences choice. But really, it's a reaction. And it's a reaction to a reaction to a reaction to a reaction. But it experiences that as being choice or being having power. It has none. Like paying rent or something. Like paying rent. No one, but anything, like saying those words. There's no choice in it. To, to to convince itself that it has choice, the individual would say it couldn't, it could not do it, or it could have said something else. That's the dream that there's something else. There isn't anything else. There aren't two. There's just this one singular appearance. This is it. No, it doesn't.
So let's have a break for about 30 minutes or so. There's snacks and tea and coffee and things back here. Loosening up the tension. Yeah, body. You mean by being here? Yeah. <clears throat> well, hearing hearing this, it seems so so obvious. So when it's pointed out, for example, that there's nothing other than what is, there's very little that the individual can do to defend its position. So if that's heard then there's a loosening up of the contraction of the individual. Because the, indivi the contraction of the individual is just trying. It's trying to find something. It's seeking. And when it's pointed out that there's nothing to find, that can be heard. And that trying, that contraction, can loosen up. It can also be equally possible that an individual hears this, says it doesn't make any sense, that's ridiculous, that's stupid, <clears throat> he doesn't know what he's talking about, and the contraction can get stronger. It's not, nobody, nobody's in control. So either of those things can happen. And it doesn't matter. Just because there's a loosening up doesn't mean that the end of the individual is closer. And just because there's more of a contraction doesn't mean the end of the individual is, is further away. And there's no suggestion that there's a process or a progress from one to the next. It's only the individual that lives in a world of process or progress. I think that people who are doing yoga, uh, they seem to believe that, that when they you know, feel more relaxed, then they are more free. Hmm. So they, I think that they, they use that uh, you know, sense of contraction or amount of that contraction in the body as some sort of reference point for how free they are. The contraction, can... the contraction that I'm talking about, nobody knows what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> the same with the individual, the same with the beliefs that arise out of the individual. Nobody knows what those are. They're recognized only when they fall away. The contraction is so completely in the entire body that it's a surprise when it falls away because it was never it was, there was no way of knowing because it's so intrinsic to the experience yeah you mentioned about those hips being so I did it right yeah I know yeah. That, uh, yeah you kind of needed to yeah I had to, to learn how to walk again, again. yeah <laughs> yeah Anybody's here that disagree. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody here. Separate. 
Not only are they not separate, but the individual isn't separate from what it's looking for. So the experience of there too is a dream. So there's no strategy to bring about oneness because there's not two-ness. The dream that there's two-ness and therefore a need to bring something about is illusory. It's not happening. <clears throat> so not only is there no way, there's no need. It's not better for there to be no individual. That's, a, that's the dream of the individual. This is already what's longed for. The experience of being an individual is unconditional love, being fancy, being clever. Look what I can do. And it didn't arise for any reason. And there's nothing that needs to happen for it to fall away. What's this unconditional love thing? If all the information of all the, the arising, if the thoughts are information, so the thoughts are information, but nothing needs to happen to it. It's just arising. Same with everything. Same with everything. It's the same as everything. Nobody's to do anything with that information. Well, there isn't anybody. There isn't anybody to do anything with the information. So nobody can do it. Information is arising, like everything is arising. And there will be a response to it, which will also be or arising. Not. Or not. Which will also be an arising. Absolutely. From there, you think Nothing. But it's not, it's not really that there's nothing that gives rise to something. It is that these words, that question, and this wall are nothing. See, the individual can understand and can work with nothing becoming something. It can, it can, it can have a position there. <clears throat> the reality, though, is that that movement doesn't actually happen. This appearance is nothing, appearing to be something. Nothing means no thing, undefinable, unknowable, emptiness, unconditional love. All those words, the infinite, all those words that can't be conceptualized. Because really, concepts are nothing concept. That's the problem for the individual, because the individual is no thing individually. So it already is the unconditional love that it's looking for. So the claim that it needs to find it, but if something needs to happen, is false. Just because there's an experience of duality isn't proof of duality. Well, how? That would be a science answer. And if you listen to them, they're saying, actually, that a vacuum will create particles. They don't know why. <laughs> Need to look <clears throat> but we're not actually discussing a story of how or why. 
what's being pointed out to is there's no need for hallowed one. It's already complete. And anything that happens within that is that completeness. Now we could talk about that like we just did about physics, but that's not what's being pointed to. How and why is seeking? Totally. So how can we ask questions without those words? All questions come from the individual. That's what this is about. <clears throat> This doesn't have a message. This doesn't have anything to say, really. There's no, there's obviously no need for anything to be said. There's obviously nothing out of place. It's only the individual that creates a message. And the message is, there's no message. It's only the individual that asks for answers. And the, and the response is, there are no answers. It's an, it's an utterly neutral message. There's nothing in it. It doesn't make the questions wrong or the individual wrong. That's just the, what seems to happen. Nobody thinks. Nobody ever. Th nobody's ever thought a thing. The eye doesn't think. Thinking happens, and the eye then takes ownership of it and creates sort of a dynamic <clears throat> that goes back and forth. But thinking happens. Thinking doesn't block what is from being what is. Thinking is what is thinking. It's wholeness thinking. Nothing does. Actually, there is only wholeness. Even if there are feelings like anger or sadness. Or Completely, absolutely. That's also wholeness. Absolutely. There's nothing that's not wholeness. Ever. There's nothing that's not wholeness. That's the problem with the individual. Because its claims are that it needs to find it or it needs to be something. It needs to be good for wholeness to arise. Mm -hmm. It's not allowed to be angry. Yeah. It's not allowed to be this or that. Because it's it, because it's experiencing separation, it says it's something is that isn't. The appearance of separation is only a confirmation for separation when that experience of separation, the appearance of separation, is the experience is real. The experience of the individual is I am real. There's a subject of reality. Everything else is real. And that's not a conscious thing. That's the arising of the I arises in and everything else. Makes everything solid simultaneously. It's all solid. It's all really happening. It's all really happening to me. And that out of that arises the need to navigate, to find my way. To find my way is in this meeting, for example. I have to listen properly. I have to hear what's being said. I have to concentrate. I have to hold on to that feeling and neglect that feeling. That's all just the story of the individual that arises out of the experience that what's happening is real. It's not. It's not real and it's not unreal. It's empty. There's no need to navigate. This is home. And that, that's never not the case. When I listen to you, there's something resonating, I don't know what, that is 
is different than if I watch the news at night. Time. Yeah. There's a different kind of resonation that yeah. I like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, this is speaking, or there's there's a there's a you know a speaking to that which is already. There's an expression of that which is already, and it's not quite as clear in the news, although it's the same thing. <laughs> That's all that's being said anyway. <laughs> that's all that's happening. And when there's no one left, it's obvious. War is nothing, wholeness, warring. Flowers are nothing, nothing flowering. This, this appearance is completely neutral. There's no need in it. That's already the case. And that just seems to be more obvious in meetings like this. And the individual goes, ah. It's so contradictory, though, because you would then have to say it had to be that way. No, no. It would only have to be that way if it were really happening. If there were some consequence. If there was some intention, there isn't any. It's empty. That's the message. That's the reason the message isn't a message. Because it's not actually saying anything. It's saying nothing. There's a request for an answer, and there's no answer. There's a request for something, and there's nothing. <laughs> but this is already nothing. It's just not as obvious. You said before. Uh, you said before that. Let's rewind. <laughs> that things are a series of reactions. The individual. That's the dream of the individual. Right. That's just pointing out that the individual has the experience of having power, volition, right. the ability to do, and it doesn't. It, doesn't. it didn't create itself. And everything after that is not itself. That's a story, but that's just a reaction to a reaction to a reaction to a reaction, experiencing itself as the cause. And what is is chaos. It's not reaction. Absolutely. Yeah. Because to say that events were linked would have to say that you knew. Well, you can say events are linked, but it's only apparent. We're not trying to, to tear everything down. We're not trying to find anything. It's this. We're just pointing to the simplicity of what arises. And that arising just doesn't need anything. It doesn't need to be understood. It doesn't need anything particular to happen. There, it's just emptiness appearing as this. It's already the fulfillment. That will never be understood. It will never be known. It doesn't need to be. That's all. That's all we're saying. And resistance and acceptance are part of that because. Well, that's also is. what is. Yeah. It's also wholeness. appears to Me. The I recognizes that there's no one. Itself. 
It's, it's, still, it's still a story. Yes. It's still a story. Yes. Recognizing that there's no one is a story. Yes, and it's like a layer is recognizing itself. Yeah, that's just a story. It's never ending story. It's just, well, until it dies. Yeah. When it's recognized it never was. It doesn't happen. It's the end of something. We're not. In, we're not there's no gain in this. It's a loss. Doesn't that mean that there's no fear in this? There's. Like we would say there seems to be this still sounds to me we're saying okay there appears to be this yeah. so there's like an apparent fruition yeah but but what if there's not even that but you I mean that's just a, a mind fuck <laughs> <coughs> there's just what is who would want to know what it was like if there weren't what is well, or if what is well, I, could, I could answer that but there appears to be what is. Absolutely, but that's what it, that's what this is saying. Mm -hmm. This is an appearance. Mm -hmm. It's not so real. We're like on base level, like, and it's not unreal. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's base level. Mm -hmm. This, that's it, happening. But, but but yeah, there was a question yesterday yesterday about the, 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 it's not about the happening versus there being a non-happening for example, like both of those, like whatever seems. But to they're be the happen, same thing. You could all exactly you could always play paste the word. Apparition in front of it. Yeah, absolutely. You so, have to actually, to be clear. You'd have yeah, to say exactly. yeah. you'd have to say apparently after every word. Yeah, exactly. That's why when she says it's all a story, yeah, it's all a story. Nothing that's being said has any value. They're pointers for no one to know things. There's nowhere to go. See, to go somewhere, something would have to be solid. To take a step, to move, something would have to be real. To step on, to move somewhere. That's the dream of the individual. Nothing solid. Everything passes right through. Nobody, nobody can hold on to anything. There's no ownership. Nobody can have anything. It's only the dream of the individual that's a moment that's a consequence of the next moment, a consequence of the next moment. Mm. And that covers over. It seems like there's, an, yeah, there's like an apparition of an apparition of an apparition. Yes, yeah, that's not the way it is. Okay. There's not a consequential apparition. That's the individual. And then it's no longer apparent, really, for the individual because time is experienced as real. I am a consequence of the past. That's the dream. The past is what is appearing as the past. There's no consequence. There's no movement. It's only apparent. No, no distance and no time and apparent distance, happening. apparent time. The individual wants it to be yes or no, or yes and no, because it wants to have a position in there. It wants there to be no time or there be time. It wants it to be apparent or not apparent, one or the other, because it can know something, it can find a position in that to know it or understand it. The fact, fact is it's, it's the same thing. Mm. No thing is something. Time is timelessness, timing. Is and isn't. See, is and isn't. That's this, is and isn't. It's not real and it's not unreal.
I heard you saying something about Bell's, Bell's theorem. Bell's theorem, yeah. Yeah, could you could you talk a bit Just more? Just science, huh? Yeah, 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 but uh, uh, it would be interesting. Was that in a video? Or huh? Was that in a video? Yeah, I did it in a, yeah, but somehow. Bell's theorem is where they, <clears throat> is it, what is it, neutrons, maybe, that always arise in pairs, I might be getting this wrong, that arise in pairs. Mm -hmm. And they have a funny quality that if you don't isolate either one of them, they are undefined. If you isolate one of them, the other one defines itself as the opposite immediately. Whether like, like push or minus or... Exactly. Okay. And they've been trying to figure out there's two possibilities. Faster than light communication, which of course can't possibly be. Or super, super consciousness, super intelligence, superposition is what they call it, superposition. That means a position that knows everything and therefore when anything changes, it immediately then orients itself to make the equilibrium continue. Super intelligence, superposition. And what they did, in, it was, this was in Vienna, <clears throat> they shot these things. I've got no idea how they do that, but they had one receptor, I think it was on the, um, on the library the university building on the library and another one somewhere else. I don't know where they were. And they shot them out. I don't know how they do this. Two different ways. God, I'm not going to get it all together. Is this interesting? You want to know all this? Yeah. It's yeah. something. <laughs> That's one way to shut me up. Um, um, and what they did to make sure that they weren't somehow informing each other through some other means as they use the light from stars that are millions of miles away, millions of light years away, so that they would know that the star light hadn't been influenced by the project itself because it had already been traveling for millions of years. <clears throat> yeah, that's, and, so they, but, and that's what happened. They figured out that, yes, they do that. They do these, this weird thing of either timelessly talking to each other or some sort of superposition. They've defined that that has to be happening, but they haven't defined what that is. They don't know what that is. They don't know why it happens. And from here, both of those are true. It's, it's faster than the speed of light and the superposition. But that's just a story. It doesn't mean anything. It just points to the fact that we don't know what this is. It reminds me the birds of Niels Bohr, this uh, Danish, uh, uh, Danish quantum physics, uh, he says something like, uh, everything we consider as real are made of things which cannot be regarded as real. Mm, totally. That's the story of the individual. That's the story of that subject-object reality. Because that object, that subject reality, would have to be singularly real. That's the experience. I know I am, but that's impossible because there must be a, se a second position to know anything. That's why, if you look for I am, you don't find anything. Yeah. But that still, that still is somebody looking and somebody knowing. It's still a story. Somebody that finds no one. That's just not what's being shared here.
some scientists uh, say that uh, all the spiritual experiences are just uh, <coughs> neurotransmitters. Could be. Brain. Could be. <coughs> so you kind of know. Now, because it's for them to be real, what the difficulty is when you're having those experiences of detachment, the experience is you know you're beyond the brain. So you know that you are eternal. So it, it, the assumption is that that is then the solution to the detachment from the body and the field. The, the, what, what you need, though, is you need somebody to come back without a brain to say it. That's the only way you would know if it were beyond the brain. Here, it seems that that, for me, is just psychic pyrotechnics, the ability to realize God. The ability to realize I am nothing. That's still that's still in some ways a position. That then comes with it the need or the want to share that, to tell somebody about that. That doesn't arise with it. It also doesn't give any answer. So if I am eternal, I never die because I know I am eternal. This doesn't give that knowledge. This doesn't give any any sort of hope or any sort of thing that you can hold on to. That here it's obvious that this doesn't even move. It's not only that I'm not eternal, I was never born. But you have to know No, no, it's the end of knowing. It's not that, not, nothing that's being said here is known. This meeting is very um, misleading in some ways. This is sitting up here, which makes it seem like it has something that that doesn't have. It's the opposite. And that has something that this doesn't have. <laughs> apparently, because nobody has anything. This is up here because it looks like it knows something. It doesn't know anything. All that's being shared is unknowing. That thinks that unknowing is something that's known. It's not that way. This sitting up here makes it look like there's an authority. There's no authority. There's no position. There's no position taken. There's no responsibility for what comes out, for what's said. None at all. It's just a happening. It's just happening. It's nothing happening. And you're aware, and yet you're aware. No, I'm not. There's no oh. one that's aware. <laughs> the thing is, is you want to put it in a position so that you can get it. Yeah, I know. I can put it in that the individual will always want to do. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> it's the timeless time thing at this point that's sticky, like. Somehow I conceptualize that there is time and I have a realness to time. And yet also I'm aware somehow, in a way that I'm not aware, that time is not real in, in the way that I think it is or in the way that I experience it. So this doesn't know anything. Uh -huh. This doesn't know time is not real. Knowing, the need to know, is how what is, as wholeness, hides. Knowing is seeking. Right. It's just simple. It's this without any need to know what it is. question about like the the ecstatic states of unification and, and you know um, you know all of these spiritual psychic hierarchies. You really like that third, don't you? I do. <laughs> You're so fascinated by it.
How did it arise? What? Psychic pyrotechnics the same way as everything else. I mean, the, the <laughs> expression. Just the expression. I have no idea. Same as everything else. I was very fond of that. Uh, last year you used that uh, psychosomatic misunderstanding. Wow. That was a sweet. So I define the I. Buddy, what's for? That's a story. That's what is appearing as the past of being born. This isn't a consequence. It appears to be. The appearance is real and unreal. things um, it's like um, it is um, oh I know the answer in a way but it is <laughs> this enlightenment thingy from the point of the dreamer or the view of the dreamer it doesn't make anything it doesn't go your problems go away or make you happy or anything from the as the dreamer sees it it's just, are you saying that when the dream dies, that doesn't make one. That, that all that's not all that's left isn't just happiness. Is that what you well, mean? I can't say that, but as um, <clears throat> I understand that many people may uh, hope that enlightenment will solve problems. Well, that's that's the dream of the individual. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That something needs to be solved. Yeah. That there's a real problem. <clears throat> the problem is the individual. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And the uh, second thing, it sounds, well, really, is that it is not likely that saying that I am being enlightened is a good pick-up line at the bar to get chicks. <laughs> I didn't know that's what we were doing here, finding out yeah. pick-up lines for, for bars. I know, I know. It's like um, when you try to... Humorous here, but <laughs> that's what people hope. We have these gurus here, here and there, who have like, or at least people suppose that they have all kind of women and stuff. And stuff. They have what? Women and oh, you know, yeah. oh, they do. They Some of them. They every day and so on. So it's like uh, in that point of view, enlightenment is really useless. There's no meaning. There's no such thing. Yeah. There's no such thing as enlightenment. No. Because somebody would have to be enlightened. That's personal enlightenment, yeah. There's no such thing as personal enlightenment. So, what is the enlightenment that we're talking about? Well, we're not talking about enlightenment. So, there's just all that's being pointed out here. We're not talking about a state or anything that anybody's going to get. What's being pointed out here is that this is everything. It's singular. <coughs> it's not dualistic. It has no need in it. It's already fulfilled. This. Just whatever's happening. So what is this enlightenment thing? That it's a religion. Okay. Or psychic. Pyrotechnics. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm not saying that people that say they're enlightened are have no integrity, because I, I know that you can realize all the things that they're talking about. What do they mean when they say they're enlightened? They, they're detached. There's the realization of what I am without the need of a body, without the need of the brain, beyond the brain, beyond experience, beyond time. That, that can be realized. But it's still an experience. Well, no, it, the, the experience or the position, the state is beyond experience. One knows that one is outside of existence. So we're somehow been through. Could you repeat that? Uh, oh, it's just, it doesn't matter. There's just these amazing experiences that an individual can have through practice. And then, and then they tell you about them. I love the fact that I know about two or three people that are talking about this. One of them fell out of a tree. One of them read one sentence in a book that he had found. Um, oh, I can't remember the other ones. And the only real practice they could give would be to fall out of trees or to read random books <laughs> and hope that something would happen. But they don't. They come up with these elaborate stories and ways of how you can find what they found. But they found. They really found something. By happenstance, without any preparation at all. So it's the individual that creates the story of causality that led up to this experience, but actually it just happened. Totally. It will always do that. So you hear in these meetings sometimes people will talk about certain things, certain realizations, certain falling aways of the individual, and they will put that into a progress, a process of their becoming less and less individual, because the experience that things are really happening still seems to be real. When there's no individual left, there's obviously no process. Nothing... There's no way that something can lead to the revelation that nothing's happening. Something happening is not needed for nothing to happen. This is already nothing happening. It's not a process. The process is a dream. Which keeps individual very busy of doing something well, it doesn't have a choice. There's no, there's no free will and choice. The individual is on a path. It's looking for the next experience. The experience that's going to give it what it feels like it's missing. And it's a bit like gambling, because it sometimes gets something that feels good for a while, and then that fades, and it has to go again. This is also taught in yoga. Yoga, Kabbalah, numerology, Buddhism... Tantra, they all teach that the practices are a waste of time and it's a grace, a miracle somehow, if you wake up. It's not to do with the practices. It's, it's taught, it's inside the, the... Those things are just to keep you busy. <laughs> and yet they keep, keep those uh, practices. Yes, but they tell you. Do they? Yes. Yes. This doesn't recognize the end of the individual or liberation as grace. Because it's not that anybody gets anything. Yeah. And to me, suggesting there's something you can do, it's like telling somebody who has a really bad headache, who you notice is constantly hitting their head against the wall, to continue hitting their head against the wall because at some point it might help them stop their headache. It's, it's an interesting analogy. I mean, it's more like instead of hit your head against the wall, you know, maybe eat some raw food, walk around the block once any, a day. It's less damaging. Any <laughs> Or drink um, yourself to death or whatever. Any suggestion that the individual can have any choice in finding what it's looking for is suggesting hitting your head against the wall is going to stop the headache. I see, I see what you're saying. 
But it, it's inside the teachings, though. I mean, so it is inside the teachings that it's not helping. It's not going anywhere. I guess it's suggested, though, in the light. state of where I think I am now. Are feelings coming first or are my thoughts? Is, is, can you talk a little bit? What, what are feelings? On this? Well, they, they change. Uh, feelings are feelings. Do they have anything to do with thoughts? Yeah, they can play with, they can play with each other. Sure, of course. That's not okay. okay. There's just what's happening. And the, the steering of the life has a lot to do with the individual's experience of good and bad and right and wrong. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't feel certain feelings and other feelings it does feel, want to feel. And so it's constantly trying to manipulate what's going on in there. When, when there's no one left, feelings are just feelings, and thoughts are just thoughts. A dream. <laughs> Despite <it. laughs> the, the individual, because it feels like its life is really complicated. This isn't a put down, guys, but it feels like it's rather special. And that its problems are special. So it has the experience or it has the, the, the expectation that the solution needs to be special. So it creates gurus, special places, energetic places to go visit, meditation rituals, all these special things with the expectation that something special, divine, is going to have to happen to solve that real problem that it has. And it kind of creates the feeling that it's uh, bigger than me or something. Well, it just has the expectation that something special has to happen yeah. because its problem is so big. It's so profound. It's such a really, life is a really big deal. And, and its life is even a bigger deal. And to, to, to make it right is going to have to be a really big deal. Something really special is going to have to happen that it's going to get right because it feels like there's something really wrong, either with itself or with the outside. I'm just referring to, I had this, I used some a few years ago, some ayahuasca, and there was this experience of having this divine energy or something close. I just asked that is there a God or something. I'm just trying to, I can, I, I totally accept that it is just my fuck or something. <laughs> but, well, I don't know how many people would um, describe it. I have this feeling that many describe it in the same way that there's this energetic thing that just emerges for a while. You're talking about ayahuasca? Hmm? 
Are we talking about the experience of being yeah, on yeah. ayahuasca? Yeah. That's just another experience. Yes. yes. And, uh, I it doesn't relate to what we're talking about at all. Here. No, no, no. It relates completely to the expectations and the needs of the individual for something special to happen, as well as do the religions and gurus that have special powers. That completely relates to the individual's experience that there's something wrong and somebody is going to have needs to help me and something special needs to happen for that to then occur. When it when that dies, it's recognized or revealed that was arrogance. It arrogates to itself these incredible needs. There's nothing needs to happen. Nothing needs to be realized. There's no need for divinity. There's no need for specialness. We're just simply talking about this, this happening. Yeah, yeah, that's most, that's that it's just I simply asked, a pair. How does it relate to this? It doesn't relate. Yes, exactly. Good. Nothing does. <laughs> can, you, can you talk about love like of another? Personal love is basically need. Right. So, it's so there's a compromise going on the whole time. I'll give you what you need, you give me what I need. In transactional analysis, they call it strokes. They give each other strokes. That's basically what personal love is. So in the falling away of the individual, there's no longer the experience of love between two, because there's no two? There's no need. That need of love is no longer there. So there's only the experience of... It's not an experience. Oh. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just what's left is just simply what's happening. What's that's, happening? that's this. You won't, you won't, no matter what you think I'm talking about, it's not close. It's not the next You'll place. make it special. You'll make it amazing. I want to... I want to have a window somehow into your experience of how love changed. This is unconditional love. Right. Nobody ever gets it. Right. If you want to know something, you're on a path. Right. This is already what's long for you. And it doesn't translate. It's not practical. It won't be. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't create a functionality. You can't use this to find what you're looking for. This is the absence of the individual. This is the absence of seeking. It's not fixing my relationships. This doesn't fix anything. It doesn't, it doesn't care if you have terrible relationships. Yeah. <laughs> it's not interested in good relationships or bad relationships. It's not interested. seems to me whenever there's a, sort of a glimpse or whatever that's not special but then the when the self comes back it immediately makes it special it's kind of absolutely that's all it can do yeah so. yeah it puts it into its story mm. yeah um. into the frames that uh, it could be uh, put on the wall mm. and Admired. Mm. It's the it's the whole the whole experience. Okay. <coughs> or the one is it is it the experience that happened? Nobody experiences. 
It's the end of the subject-object relationship. There's no subject. There's no object. There's just everything. This, this is that. This isn't solid. It's not moving. It's not unmoving. There's nowhere for a relationship to happen because there's no position in it. And it's just everything. There is no person. There is only everything. The experience that there's a person that's separate from everything is the dream. There is never a person that's separate from everything. So when that experience stops happening, nothing changes. This is already everything. But nobody ever knows that. Something happening, but nobody can tell the story. Well, I, maybe. It, does that suggest there's a story that nobody can tell? Because there's no story. No. There's well, no story and everything's empty. There's nothing really happening. If that's what you mean, yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> show about nothing. What's that? The show about nothing. The show about nothing. There was a, a Seinfeld episode. Did you know the American sitcom? I know Seinfeld, yeah. Yeah, there was a show about nothing. Oh. They got this idea. George got an idea that they are creating this uh, television series to the ABC or whatever was, was that channel. That it was a show about nothing. Oh. And they asked, that, uh, so what happens there? These producers of the Company and they were like, nothing, nothing happens. You know, okay, tell me something. Well, you know, I wake up and I walk to the office and, and that's it. But there must be something happening. No, nothing happens. <laughs> and it, they, they just kept on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. sounds like a uh, watch Seinfeld. I've, I've heard of it. I saw you on YouTube. Huh? <laughs> 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 through, through linking from something I didn't even know. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in love with this guy. He's amazing. He's amazing. <laughs> he <laughs> is. He's amazing. That's what I, I like, think all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you asked was, if I have thoughts. That's what I think. And I'm like, God, I'm amazing. No, I'm just I was watching this YouTube clip and I was like crying and laughing and crying and laughing and crying and laughing and I was like, oh my god. And then here I am in Finland and then somehow pops up on my Facebook, this dude, he's here. I'm like, I've got to go chat up to that. <laughs> <laughs> what a letdown, huh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
She will never fall in love. <coughs> <coughs> this was the last time <laughs> she fall in love with anyone. Better in the past. <laughs> it was better in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the editing. <laughs> Thanks, Mika. <laughs> Nothing ever does. <laughs> it's that need of the individual that keeps it going. It'll, ne it'll never happen. The end of the individual isn't even happening. All right, how? No, no, it's not all right. It's not all right. <laughs> no, no, there's just it's not it's not all right or not all right. How is it? Yeah, it's not all right or not all right. What word would you say? It's what it is. It has no value. It has no charge in it at all. The experience the individual has of this has a charge of good and bad and right and wrong is the dream. If there's no charge in it. Okay. The individual wants to feel all right. Yeah, yeah that, absolutely. that's what you're saying. Right? Well, because it feels like something's wrong. Translates here that this is all right, even yeah. though you don't really mean with perfection. Well, perfect, that well perfection right, is also okay. feeling shitty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's perfection. Yeah. Having an arm cut off, that's perfection. <laughs> <laughs> let's get this. <laughs> let's, let's get the knife and check out. <laughs> It's pointing to simply what's happening as perfection. Perfection is a dangerous word because of what yeah. you said. The individual has ideas of what that means. This is the the unbefangen, the um, boundless perfection, the the judgmentless perfection, the unconditional perfection. It's not pointing to a condition. It contains all conditions. Suffering is perfection. That's, what, that's sort of what's being pointed to. There's nothing that's not perfect. Everything that's, that ever happens is more perfectly what's looked for. The, it's, it is unconditional love. It is home. Even suffering is home. There's no need for anything not to happen. And I'm not suggesting that then this, for example, wouldn't move away from a hot, a hot fire or wouldn't, wouldn't avoid emotional relationships that are troublesome. That happens naturally. There's no need for an individual in here to do anything about that. But there's also no judgment about what's happening as being imperfect. It's just a different kind of perfection yeah. that I is looking for. Absolutely. It misunderstands everything I say. I've given up a long time ago. <laughs> that anybody's going to understand it. That anybody's going to, yeah. It just misunderstands everything and then what to do. Somehow we are here again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do, you, do you ever share this message in, in, in any other language than English? No, German sometimes. 
Does it does it at all change the landscape of, of like? No, anything? no, it's amazing. The, the, I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, this is a story. Just so everybody knows. So, the first time the whole the whole of this was revealed was like three or four years ago, and it and it was never. It had, I had no idea what happened. Sometime after that, maybe a couple of years after that, somebody asked me to start talking about it, and so I did. I started to talk about it. And then since then, there's been new revelations, I would say. And I will run to my wife, and I will say, it's all different. I've never said anything true before. And I'll explain it to her, and it's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't change. It's true all the way down. So it doesn't matter what language it's said in. I, 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 because I've been tri tripping up a, a lot about the language aspect of, of, of the message, that maybe, that maybe it's like a linguistic, in a way what we're discussing is sort of like a linguistic semantic compound or something. Yeah. Like I, even the notion that there's a the word with the, the no thing word makes it kind of tricky. Well, when, when, you, when you use that word, at least the, because what I've realized that in Finnish, for example, there is no straight translation to nothing. Yeah. There's like the, the notion of there being not anything, but there is not this known. But it's not not anything. Mm. It's not it's not emptiness or blackness. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> True. I mean, it's yeah. Like all of those labels are not it, obviously. No, but that's that's really the point. That's why you use words that are impossible to conceptualize. Such as infinite, unconditional love, no thing, emptiness. Because what it does is it brings it brings the individual to a brick wall where it can't go anywhere. That's not intentional. That's just what happens when what can't be described is is comes out in words. So this is a brick wall for the individual as it's no thing walling. But that's all there is. So this doesn't move. It's not going anywhere. There's nothing behind it. There's nothing in it. There's nothing in front of it. There's nothing on either side of it. This is the whole of everything, this. And that's empty. But it's Jim Newman over there. Well, of course not. Doing my thing over here. But the, no. the, what's being pointed out is there's no over there, and there's no over oh. here, and nobody's doing either one of those things because there isn't anybody in it. And that's that's not impossible to conceptualize. If you if if an individual tries to conceptualize no here, it will use here to know where it's not. That's not what's being talked about. This is beyond conceptualization conceptualization, beyond experience. <clears throat>
uh, I would like to describe this living of this uh, dualistic life, like you know, this uh, Zen saying is like uh, chopping wood and carrying water, and also like hitting head against the wall. So, how would you describe after you know your experience of you know for something falling down? So, how would you say this like chopping chopping wood or, or carrying water? What's the does the Zen saying go? Before enlightenment, there is chopping wood and carrying water, yeah. and after enlightenment, there's chopping wood and carrying yeah. water. <laughs> <laughs> And hitting, hitting head against the wall. That was just describing the the the, the, the silliness of trying to help somebody find no thing. Mm. Yeah, because because for me, this what you talked about this hitting hitting head against the wall. It's really it's it's very important uh, uh, because um, about the hope that uh, yeah. that. Um, Okay, uh, I live in a hopeless situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's very, I don't know, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a caustic joke or something. Oh, it's yeah. hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Just nobody ever laughs. Yeah. <laughs>, <laughs> nobody ever gets the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Same kind of situation that an individual individual tries to get rid of individual. Yeah. yeah. And there isn't one. Hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I knew somebody would say that. <laughs> this, this message does not help. Okay. The end of the individual isn't helping anybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the end of a dream, the end of something that didn't happen. The dream is that something needs to happen, that this is somehow incomplete. That's the dream. That's not true. So there's no one to help. But you come here, you fly here. Of course I don't. <laughs> if we're going to talk about it like that, I, I have to say, nobody does it. Yeah. This isn't happening. It's just something that apparently happened. There's, it's obvious that there's no intention to what's happening. It's also obvious that there's nothing that could be said to help an illusion rid itself of itself. It has absolutely no power whatsoever. It had no power in creating its appearance, and it has no power in destroying its appearance. It can do nothing, because it isn't real. It's a dream. There's no one to tell that all there is is the infinite, appearing as duality. There's no one to tell that there's no subjective reality. There's no one to tell that this is already home. Because the experience of the individual is this isn't home. There's no one to tell. Does something in your being experience pain arising that the message cannot be delivered? Not at all. What's wrong with there? There's nothing wrong with there being an individual. There's nothing wrong with suffering. There's no intention that this that, that this appearance has no intention to be anything other than it is. It's obvious that this appearance, this is an equilibrium. There's nothing happening. There's nothing out of place. There's nothing apart. There's no suffering about suffering. Exactly.
helping someone devise the idea that there would be a problem uh, which could be solved. And, uh, and, and someone, that's why and uh, someone with free will and choice that could do it. Yeah. And separation that could be bridged. <coughs> None of those things are true. So you are basically just pointing that uh, of course, there, there, is, there is no problem. Of course that's not, this, there's no one in here doing anything. It's quite obvious that there's no one here responsible for what's being said. These words are nothing, appearing as words. Just sim it's the same as those words are a question of nothing, question. There isn't anybody anywhere. There's just what apparently happens. And what apparently happens is nothing happening. You're never going to make millions this way. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But tomorrow there's Shakti Pan. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. What? Yeah, 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 don't pull that back. <laughs>